using the Mini Pro Dyno to test motors. What I'm going to do is to use the Dyno and the software to test initially a 13.5 turn and 17.5 turn motors which will be used in blinky mode which is the uh, most critical uh, test for motors to find which ones are the best, how to get the best out of them and then to compare other motors as they come along to Anyway, the, the test setup here I'm going to use is a high performance battery, uh, 7.5 ampere hours 90C, kept fully charged at all times so that doesn't change any of the results. A Hobbywing 3.1 set on blinky mode and then the dyno I'll be doing a couple of tests to determine the performance of the motors. When you're in uh, blinky mode there's a couple of things you need to know. You need to know the acceleration of the motor, how quick it accelerates, the RPM it get to, the max, and from that you can also determine the KV of the motor. And there's uh, one other thing that you want to know and that's the efficiency. Now here's a graph of uh, typical efficiency of this motor I've got on there at the moment. And what you can do when you test the efficiency is work out the point where you gear, which will be just past the maximum and you can read off the RPM. So that's a very important graph. The motor that I'm going to use is this R1 Work 17.5 and 17.5, which are class leaders. And uh, I'll use it as the one to compare all other motors to. I'll start with the 13.5 turn class and, and do a test on it. And then the sort of adjustments we can make for blinky racing. Now, when you're doing blinky zero time racing, uh, you put a lot of advanced timing on the M bell to get maximum performance. And it's important that you don't over advance or under advance. There will be a critical point and hopefully the graph will show that point. Uh, so then adjustments to the end bell. The other test you, I, I can do a test of the motors. I can even change the rotor, for instance, try a weak rotor, medium strength, high strength rotors, and just show you how it affects the performance and whether it'd be suitable for you on small tracks, large tracks, or whatever. So I'll be starting with the, um, the R1. Uh, at the moment, I have my test motor on there, the Scorpion 13.5 turn, which I use for testing all the speedos. And the typical graph, as I said, will be the efficiency uh, graph. Now, also on the efficiency graph, I've got uh, the ability to look at a summary, and uh, it tells me the maximum efficiency. 69.4% and the revs uh, 15,614 RPM. So that figure is the, uh, the important one which we need to know. You can see it approximately on the graph here and you would gear it, it passes the maximum efficiency point which is 16,000 there and it starts falling away so you can gear it anywhere between uh, about 16, 17,000, 18,000 RPM is the best place to gear a motor. After that you're just wasting power and not really getting any more uh, out of the motor except heat. Looking at other graphs, and here's a typical graph I'm going to be comparing motors with for the RPM um, uh, current as amps versus time. First of all, I'm going to accelerate the motor at 10% throttle for two seconds just to see what the what the slow speed bottom end is like, and that will also be affected by the strength of the rotor. Then uh, go straight to 100%. You've got the acceleration curve here. The, the steeper the curve, the faster it will be accelerating and then it will peak out. I'll do uh, six seconds of acceleration which should be enough to get the peak, 20, about 25,000 RPM. And then the brakes. Well, uh, 
Using the speed control, uh, the brakes aren't great, but you'd expect to be able to tell the difference in one motor or another depending on the strength of the rotor. On this graph also, it will show the amps. And th there is another uh, graph which we can look at, which is KV. And it shows you the maximum KV there, which is uh, 3,000 about. There is a summary which gives you um, things like torque and maximum RPM reached 24,416. So uh, there's some detailed results if I need them. But initially, this is the uh, curve and then we can mess around with the motor and adjust this, see if it makes any difference, and then uh, compare it to other motors. Down the bottom here, there is some detailed results of that graph, and you can measure the KV. You need to scroll up and down, and the maximum KV was just over 3,000. There are some uh, quite a lot of figures on here as well, including the efficiency uh, but you need to compare it to the RPM, which is on the left, the efficiency on the right. You can find uh, the maximum efficiency uh, against the RPM. I can also pull up a graph. That shows the efficiency versus RPM. And you can see it's a, the efficiency, 60 to 80% is a pretty flat. So you could possibly gear this motor quite away over the top of the efficiency hump about here. Setting up the R1 13.5 uh, to the best position for Blinky to start the test off. Uh, set it to 6 amps on this tester here. 6 amps is doing an impressive KV of 4225 and uh, Excellent revs, 33 over 33,000 at 7.9 volts. And um, I can just show you the timing as well. 51 average, uh, 55, 50, 47. So typical poor spread that you get on some of these motors, but it's the best we can do. On the m -Vel, it's showing just under 54 just under 55 on the mark. Testing the R1 30.5 turn motor set up for Blinky. Just going to do an acceleration and brake test. Analyzing the results of the tests on the R1 13.5 turn motor and comparing it to my Scorpion 30.5 turn, which I use for testing speedos. It, um, they've both been tuned to 6 amps uh, uh, free running, which gives uh, a timing generally around 50 degrees on the M-bells. And uh, I find this gives you the best performance on the track. So looking at the results, there's quite a few graphs we can look at. But uh, looking at this one, which is the uh, acceleration and RPM reached. The Scorpion's a brown one, and you can see it accelerates uh, when we hit, I do 10% and then I put maximum on. Uh, between there and there, about one second, uh, they both accelerate about the same, up to 15,000 RPM. After that, the blue one, the R1, keeps on going, and the Scorpion is tailing off uh, to about 25,000 RPM. And the R1, it would still keep going, it hasn't quite tailed off, but it's over 28,000 RPM. The braking, uh, uh, they both brake virtually the same. Uh, that must be limited 
by the speed controls, so not by uh, the actual motor itself. Makes no difference really. Now, uh, other graphs we can look at is the efficiency. Efficiency versus RPM. Now, um, and we'll ignore the bottom piece of the graph if that's when it went to um, brakes. So here we have the Scorpion. And it's very efficient. It gets this cur this graph is a bit uh, got a bit jagged, but that's just the way the software uh, goes. Basically, the curve is you smooth it out, and it's peaking up here at the nearly seventy percent efficient, which is very good for a motor. Whereas the R1 is right down here at fifty five percent. That means it's going to uh, generate a lot of heat. But you can gear these motors right over the peak until it starts falling. So you could gear the about 18,000 RPM would be the maximum that you would want to gear for this motor. Otherwise, you'll just uh, start stalling it at high, free, at high speed. On the uh, R1, it's very flat efficiency, and you can push it all the way up here. Uh, and it's only dropped to about 50% efficiency and it's 24,000 RPM so a huge difference at the top end the R1 uh, will keep on pulling and uh, will give you a very high speed but at the expense of uh, energy going in if we look at the amps when it starts accelerating you can see that the Move one is the Scorpion, not such a big peak, and it drops down or much less current. And when I said you, you would gear it about 18,000 RPM, it's drawing about 30 amps, 18,000 along there, under 30, just under 30 amps, and then the R1, if we could gear it up here to get to th about 30 amps, it would be right up here, 26,000 RPM. But uh, on the way there, it draws a lot more current to get to that point, so it's using a lot more energy. Graph showing the R1 uh, acceleration RPM with different end bell timings. The blue one is 30 degrees, the green one is 40 degrees, and the brown one is the optimum, like I said it, at 6 amps, which is actually indicated on the ember about 55, but uh, was actually 51 measured. But anyway, you can see that they all accelerate about the same, up to about... Uh, up to about 20,000 RPM. After that, the optimized one uh, keeps on going, and the other two have peaked out. So, significant RPM increase. But at what cost? So, we can look at the amps as well. The, this one is the maximum which 51 degrees, the red one is 40 degrees and the pink one is 30 degree end bell so peak pulse is there and then if I amplify here you can see that the current is about 23 amps just for the maximum advance and the other one the 40 degree one is about 18 and the 30 degrees about 16 amps when it's, they're reaching the maximum RPM. Uh, the efficiency, but you can see that the efficiency at 30 degrees is very high. I mean it peaks just under 65% but at 50 degrees 
it's not a huge drop actually it's down here somewhere under 60 maybe 58 and at 55 degrees it's dropped to only 50 peaking at 56 the um, 30 degree is very peaky on efficiency though if you geared it if you geared them all over here exactly the same place at the same point round about here 21,000 rpm the efficiency 20,000 they're all about the same efficiency so that's not very useful really uh, you want to know whether it's worth having a lot of advanced timing on the MBEL the power output above about 14,000 rpm the power output for the optimum tune one is higher but we know it's drawing more current as well and the torque just the same torque increases so it's as you would expect so what, what can we gather from all this? Well, the fact is that it's very difficult to know what to, how to set your motor. You can keep on pushing the M bell up, uh, advanced timing higher and higher and higher. The efficiency starts going down and down and down. And uh, the heat of the motor will increase. So it's going to be a trade-off in the end against how hot you run the motor before it burns out. And whether the extra RPM you get is of any use because it takes time to accelerate the motor. You need quite a long straight. It's not going to accelerate to maximum RPM very, very quickly uh, as we've seen with the simulation. RPM versus time from there to there at six seconds. So that's quite a, a straight you'll be holding the power on for six seconds to benefit from that. If your straight was only uh, four seconds here, you'd still be ahead with the optimum tuned. If it's a very short burst, just a couple of seconds, you probably want to there'd be no difference for two seconds on on doing that at all and it just it draws more amps